Hey, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique and today we're checking out the brand new Reference 2 from Mastering the Mix. This is a phenomenal plugin that gives you a ton of analysis tools in order to make sure an album sounds similar and cohesive or if you're A being or even seeing different styles of a mix, it lets you see everything and how each one of them stacks up against each other by using the original reference series down here. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started using this plugin. And along the way, hopefully tell you enough about it to get you interested to click that link in the video description because it really is a phenomenal tool for those looking to get into the mixing and mastering game. Right now, what I have is my original track and this is what it sounds like. I've got the stems right inside of Ableton Live. You can see that. And I have reference to as the last plugin in my mastering chain. Then I have a reference track, which is a second song or instrumental from the album. All right, and we can actually have as many reference tracks as we want here. So what I'm gonna do is jump in and pull in a second one. And as soon as I do that, boom, I've got it over here. Now you might've noticed the volume get louder there all on its own. And that's because I have level matching turned on. And this is very, very important when you are comparing any two pieces of audio. There are actually a bunch of different options on how to match here. Here, I'm gonna match all of the imported audio or all of my reference tracks to the original track. Or I can match everything to the quietest track of the bunch, or I can have everything get leveled out to negative 14 short-term LUFS, which is kind of the standard when you're rendering audio for streaming services. You can also choose to do it to the single track or to all tracks. So I'm gonna keep it on match to the original and move it to all tracks, exit out of there, and we should be good to go. Everything should be relatively the same in terms of volume. Then what we wanna do is play the audio and click back and forth just to make sure. We can do it by just clicking. Um, you don't have to move to the highlighted one to re-click it. You can just click the same thing again, they're linked, or you can actually hit the left arrow on your keyboard to do it as well. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so that's the very basics here. To add a track, you can drag and drop it in up here, or you can click right here to add reference tracks. Now, we can choose to see the peak levels or the true peak levels. We also have integrated LFS or short term. I'm gonna leave it on integrated and peak for now. Just know that those options are there. To reset these, you just gotta click them like most other DAWs. And then we come down here to the Trinity display. And this is where things really get interesting. If I click right here, I've got a bunch of different options. I've got line level, punch dots, stereo width, and auto scale. So what I'm gonna do is unhighlight those and just leave it on line level for a second. And I'm gonna let the audio play and you're gonna see what looks like an EQ curve show up here. So while it's playing, I'm gonna control click in here to freeze it. All right, so you wanna let it kind of level out there. And then if you control click, you'll get a frozen portion or segment of that line level. Now, what this is telling us is the difference between the EQ curve or the perceived loudness of the original track and the reference track. And if I hover over here, you'll see that I've got sort of a dip right here and I can come in and below here, I'll actually see the frequency it's displayed there in blue 1763 or 1700 Hertz. And if you look over here on the left, it'll actually show you. So right around 18, I'm getting negative 5.3 difference. So to make this track, the original track, sound closer to the reference in that frequency range, I'm gonna have to boost around that frequency range about five decibels. Now, right now I'm on difference mode. And if you come into options, there is a ton of options to choose from here. I've got refresh speed, short, medium, and integrated. This is actually pretty important. I'm gonna come back to that. But what I wanna point out right now is I have match. And this is like if I wanna EQ match. And essentially what that's gonna do is invert this if I click that and hit save, and then if I play it now, you'll see that the EQ curve has been 
inverted. So depending on what you're trying to do or which workflow works better for you, this might be a better approach. Essentially now I need to make a boost in this frequency range to match my EQ of the original to the reference. That, may, that might make more sense to some people. So it's great that that feature is there. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'm gonna move the plugin window over here. I've got an EQ. Now it's very important. I'm using this in a mixing session, okay? So it might be better for me to actually go in and adjust some of the line levels of some of the different channels in my mix right around that frequency range. And another really cool feature about references, if I click right here, I can actually solo a particular range to hear whatever instrument is in that range. So if I go ahead and do that now, So I'm hearing the keys, I'm hearing the guitar, and I'm hearing a lot of that snare. So it is possible that I might wanna get into my mix session or inside of Ableton Live here and make some adjustments there. But to save on time right now, I'm just gonna put an EQ curve on, turn on one filter node, okay? And I'm gonna push it up. Remember, we wanna make this EQ essentially look like this EQ curve here. So what I'm gonna do is right around 2K, which is right in the middle of this bump, I'm gonna really push it up. And in fact, let's just do it exactly what it says, right around seven decibels. I'm just gonna double click and just type in seven. I should get the white line level to get closer to the middle here. All right, so that's what we're doing here. And it did, it, get a lot, it got a lot closer and I need to make some other adjustments like perhaps turn on this filter, but maybe put it on a shelf. And what are we looking at? Like a, you know, something like a four decibel boost right around 13. So let's come in here, right around 13. Let's boost it up four decibels. And now maybe I'd have to put in a second one and pull it down a little bit closer there. So you get where I'm coming from here? This is what reference is all about. As I said before, the Trinity display actually shows other information as well. All right, so now let's talk about punch dots. These have to do with the short-term dynamic range or how much a track is compressed. So we can con essentially compare the compression or dynamics of the original to the reference. And if I go ahead and play the music now, you'll notice some differences. Some of the lines are going towards the zero dB crossing and some of the lines are going away, or dots rather. If the dots are going towards the zero dB line, it means that the original is more compressed or has less dynamics than the reference. And if they're moving away from the zero dB line, it means that your original has more dynamics than the reference. And also the brighter the dots, the more of the difference. So using that information, you could easily throw more compression onto your bass or your kick, or even throw a multiband compressor onto your master to make your original jive better with the reference. The Trinity display also has a stereo width display. And the stereo display doesn't show both, it actually just shows whichever one you have selected. So for these two tracks, the original seems to have a bunch of stereo information here in the middle, but is lacking up here in the top. So again, I have a few different options at my disposal. I can get into my stems and my channels and start to do some more intricate panning with the instruments and the drums and so forth. Or I can use a multiband stereo tool on my master channel to create extra stereo width using that method as well. The final option for the Trinity display is the auto scale feature. I'm gonna turn that on with the line level here and I'm gonna go ahead and let it play. When these numbers are white, it means the auto scale feature is on. If I click right there, I can actually turn it off and cycle through how big I want the grid to be. But let's jump back in here and turn it on. And I actually tend to leave it off because watch what happens when I leave it on. Because 
the line level is crossing the threshold and it dips back up and down. I'm getting a lot of big jumps there and that can be a little bit misleading or it can be a little bit distracting. So for the most part, when I'm looking at the line level, I like to have it set to you know pretty close to the maximum and go ahead and turn it off just so I can really see what's going on. So that's just scratching the surface of the new features inside of Reference 2. Make sure to click the link in the video description to find out full details. Anyway, I'm Joshua Casper here for Plugin Boutique. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.